Just where do a bottle of Trante and Malbec hide? Malbec! Where's that bottle of Malbec? Gotta find it somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh boy. All right, so let's go on to the thing that I have been waiting for for a very long time. Let's go ahead and switch these bottles out. Okay. And let's talk about this particular Malbec that you have today. Sure. So uh, the Gamache Malbec, uh, Roger Gamache is the owner of the vineyard and uh, he does an excellent job. Roger is just a really gentle soul. So it's always nice buying fruit uh -huh. from guys who you know you like. Malbecs run the gamut, right? You can get yeah. spicier, you can get a little bit earthier, you can get more tannic. Yeah. This one tends to have a lot of sort of marmalade notes to it. So it really fills your mouth. It's really like warm and juicy and kind of like a dark macerated fruit roll up almost, okay. but 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 kind of complicated at the same time. I mean, it's really, really delicious. Mm -hmm. And um, and has some black pepper there in it as well. Some of those brambleberry notes that Malbec is so known for. Should we pour some? Yeah, okay, nice. all right, yeah. we'll pour some, we'll pour some. So Roger does a great job with this vineyard. The vines are pruned just beautifully. Malbec can get really out of hand if you don't cluster thin and, and kind of watch it and um, and Roger does a, a great job sort of taming the beast if you will. Argentinian Malbecs that I am accustomed to are jammy up front but also have like breath of fresh air for some reason I just yeah. imagine like kind of like that kind of like snow peaks kind of rushing. Right. You know. I always know that I'm drinking a good Malbec when I I think one thing that happens is it's um, it's doable but rare to like cook the fruit in the vineyard in Argentina. Hmm. A lot of these guys are kind of on high altitude or slopes, right. and so even though you've got your warmth, um, you've got sort of continual wind, or you you've got a slope where you're you're in a spot where you're not just sitting and just. Then Soaking, yeah. Soaking heat. Right, right, right. Um, and so with Argentina, you do often get that acidity to balance out yeah. other things on the long finish. You get sort of that refreshing, um, bright fruit. Um, and then I think, you know, you've got the other end of the spectrum before with sort of like the tannin bombs. Um, and I think the U.S. is a really nice middle ground where you get some pepper, some marmalade, some of those brighter fruits, the, ra the raspberries, the cherries, the strawberries, but some of the sinister stuff as well that mm -hmm. keeps it really interesting. Right, right. So I like, I like Malbec out of Washington State a lot. This is mother's milk. Mother's milk <laughs> right here. <laughs> is tasty good with food so what is the future for flying chop well um, you're, 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 you're on a great uh, movement yeah now I mean is there is there anything that you want to try try differently or something new or are you just going to keep um, yeah, you know, in the past we've um, we've just focused on the Tron test from Argentina, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get uh, the ball rolling with some more Malbec. Would be great. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're focusing uh, on this upcoming harvest. We're going to have a Red Mountain Vineyard. Uh, we've had some in the past, and this is a new one that I'm really excited about. Um, and. Uh, so there are some there are some changes, um, but mostly I'm just really glad to, to be back doing what I love. Yeah, yeah. Back to the grindstone. You're uh, are you started back this last year. You're now teamed up with Tarot Estates. Right. Yeah. And uh, Tarot Estates is 
one of the big boys here in town. Uh, great wines, uh, uh, fantastic vineyards. It's so, the oldest commercially, it's the oldest commercially planted vineyard mm -hmm. in the Walla Walla yeah. APA along with Seven Hills, planted all at the same time. Yeah. You have two wonderful children. I have two wonderful and children. And a uh, Walla Walla winemaker. Icon husband, of the winemaker husband. Who is uh, tall and handsome. Yes. Very good looking. I pick him good. You do pick him good. Yeah. So you are one half of a winemaking family. I am one half of the winemaking family. Alice is three and she has already decided everything. <laughs> Whatever it is she is meant to be doing, she will clearly figure that out on her own. Uh -huh. I, it doesn't bother me one way or the other, whether she goes down this route or the other. I will say uh, I am very lucky to be able to do as fun of a job mm -hmm. and as fascinating of a job as this is. I mean, it's hard it to even fun. call it a job. Yeah, and true. Brian would agree with me wholeheartedly. Tell me without naming names, I don't want any names, no first names, no last names, I already no, feel like no businesses whatsoever. I already feel like I'm up against a wall here. All right. Tell me one of your craziest wine stories. The craziest, definitely. Yes. Was, um, there was a, there was a harvest that I was working. This is anticlimactic because I won't get anybody up here in trouble. <laughs> that's, well, actually, that's, that's probably better. <laughs> Uh, I was working down in Argentina. I was interning with uh, with a winery, and I was it was a new winery. It was their first year. They were Chilean funded, but Argentinian, and um, so there was a lot of management that wasn't there. And um, I was sort of this illegal intern, <laughs> sort of, and um, and they just handed me a lab to to start. I set up this lab, and um, I had never set up a cash still before, and. I'm running this cash still that I had sort of pieced together and um, and it explodes at the exact same time that the Argentine version of the TTB, sort of the governing alcohol oh, no. body, was touring through this winery. But I had to, once you start this cash still process, it's 40 minutes. Yeah. And um, well, this was during harvest and it was a big winery so you couldn't stop the cash still halfway to go hide from the TTV. Right. And so I kept the cash still going. It explodes. Luckily, this winery was such a chaos that there was construction work going on and th these TTV guys just thought it was something construction related. Nobody even checked on it. Nice. And so I just let it explode and then went and hid in the bathroom until <laughs> the coast was clear. <laughs> until the coast was clear, and then I went out, and you know we had to stay an extra two hours that day to Take just to get all the cash still, uh, you know, stuff wow. fixed. But um, yeah, hi hiding from the feds and exploding yes. laboratory equipment. Hiding from the Argentine feds. Hiding from the Argentine feds, which plenty of people have done before. Yeah, I'm sure. Usually, yes. it's it's not yeah. uh, me, but. Uh, Ashley, thank you very much for coming on by uh, the mighty Malbec uh, HQ headquarters. Um, fantastic wines, and uh, we will probably see you again real soon. Great. I All would right. love that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For is coming. 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 Malbec? I don't know where that Malbec went. It's hiding somewhere. Wait a sec. Hey! Who ordered the Franzia? Seriously? Anyone? Franzia? Really?